Hey, this is Josh with Foreman Machines. Uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial on uh, setting up Lightburn Bridge onto a Raspberry Pi and being able to control your laser uh, over Wi-Fi. So it's pretty cool. Uh, if you have the extra cash on hand, I would just say just order it straight from Lightburn themselves. Give them some support. But if you have Raspberry Pi on hand and you don't want to spend the money, this is a great way to do it. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. I think it'll work on other ones. I don't know for sure, but. Um, uh, you don't need this case, you don't need this fan, it's not doing a whole lot of processing. Uh, it's pretty basic. Um, you'll need a power supply. This is just 5 volts, nothing special, so if you have a cell phone charger laying around, it'll work just fine. Uh, go through your junk drawer and find a Ethernet cable. Uh, this will be how we connect to the Rowita controllers. Some sort of SD card reader uh, if your computer doesn't have one built in and your micro SD card here. This is just a 16 gig, nothing special, just uh, had it laying around. I believe 64 is the max this can read, so don't go buy like a super big one. But yeah, so let's jump into the computer side. Look what we need to do to get this loaded up with the image that will run this guy. And from there, it's basically child's play to get this thing going. Alrighty, so we're on the computer here. We went to lightburn.com and uh, found their Lightburn Bridge Kit, which happens to be sold out. So maybe you do need to uh, put this on a Raspberry Pi. So it does work with 3, 3B, 3B Plus, and 4. Um, but what we are looking for is this right here. We're going to click on that and we're going to download the image or basically the operating software for the Raspberry Pi. And if you want, uh, you know, text instructions, just to click on this link and it'll bring you to a uh, Lightburns page. Um, so I've already downloaded it. I'm not about to download it again. Uh, and we are going to move over to raspberrypi.com and you go to their software and over to their uh, imager. So any imager should work, but I figure uh, theirs is really nice and clean and quick. So I've also downloaded this uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, so fun fact was that the reason why they came up with the Lightburn Bridge was because Macs were having a really hard time connecting via USB. So they wanted to make it as easy as possible. So click on that one if you're on a Mac. All right, so I've already got it uh, downloaded and installed. Uh, it's a very basic program. So I'm just gonna open this guy up, say yep. And I have already got my SD card plugged in. So just get that connected to your computer. And first thing we need to do is we need to choose an operating system. Uh, so they've got a bunch here that are just generic ones that make it really easy. We're eventually gonna use custom and grab our own. But first things first, we want to erase uh, everything on our card uh, and format it. Uh, you don't have to do it through this, but uh, uh, we're here anyways. So we're gonna click on here. Hold on. Maybe I don't have mine plugged in. So there we go. We're gonna click on that. Uh, so if there's more here, make sure you are clicking on the correct one. So it's obviously it's uh, decided not to show up my computer's personal hard drive, which has my operating system on it. Uh, but it is entirely possible for it to make a mistake. So make sure you're getting the right one because it's about to delete everything off of it forever. All right, I'll do that. Yes. And that's kind of it's doing all this fun jazz. Um, that's basically because it's going in and out of the computer there. So it's a little confused. Boom. Okay. And we have erased everything. Good. So we're going to change the erase over to our custom. So you'll want to go over to your downloads folder. I've deleted everything out of mine just so it's easier to find. Uh, but Lightburn Bridge. Blah, 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 dot image, dot xz. There we go. We're going to open that. we got to click on our storage again. And then we are going to write that to it. So this takes a few minutes, depending on how fast all your jazz is. But I'd say it's probably going to be less than 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we will get back to it once this is done. 
All right, as you can see, uh, it has been written to the USB device, which is our SD card, uh, and we can uh, remove that. So that's all we needed to do. So we're just going to pull that out, and we will put it in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now we need to uh, change the IP configuration on our Rowita controller here. Um, your screen might look different, but there's a bunch of different ones, and uh, it's all basically the same. So we're going to go to Menu, Parameter Settings, we're going to go over to IP Config, and then if you have an extra thing like a gateway or something like that, you're going to ignore that. Uh, we're looking for the IP address. You want to change it to 10 0 3 3 and then remember to uh, click right. And uh, once you do that, you're all good to go. That's all you have to do on this side. Alrighty, we are down at the machine here. We're gonna kind of double step this. So here's the Raspberry Pi and the SD card with uh, the image on it. Now the SD card slot is on the bottom part of the board here. Let me just access it from the side here. So we're just gonna click that in there. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of like a fancy clicker holder thing on there, but it works just fine. Uh, next we have our power cable, which is just plugged into a wall or wherever you're plugging it into. So we are going to plug that in right on this side here. And we do that. Uh, we're going to get a red light, a green light blinking, and it's loading up the image for the first time. Just gonna give that just a minute. Um, so while it's doing that, uh, we've got the uh, Rowita board right here. This is the, the main bit of it uh, outside of the screen that does all the processing and whatnot. There's three things on the top here, uh, and on my machine, they've just rerouted the USBs over to here. Uh, as well as the Ethernet. So if you want to, you can just plug into that Ethernet on the outside of the, uh, the machine. But uh, I'm going to put my Raspberry Pi on the inside so that it's just a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to take this Ethernet and disconnect it. I'm just going to set it to the side and we are going to plug in our own Ethernet. Down on there. Uh, looks like we are just about done there. So. Uh, I believe that will stay green, and we're going to plug it into our Ethernet here. There we go. And I'll position this some other way. That doesn't need to be part of the video. <laughs> All right, so at this point we have uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, inside of our laser cutter and our IP address on the Ruida controller over to 10.0.3.3. So from here we need to get it set up on Lightburn and also onto our Wi-Fi network, which is pretty easy. So then we're going to come down, look for our available Wi-Fi's, and you'll see that it'll have Lightburn Bridge and it'll be some numbers and letters over here, but just make sure you're clicking on Lightbird Bridge, and we're gonna connect, connect to that guy. It's gonna open up our web browser. Do, do, do. And uh, so we are gonna be connecting to Netgear 46. Uh, this could be different for yours, this is just mine. Uh, we're gonna put our password in here. So we're going to click connect and it'll take just a minute to do that and uh, from what I noticed it actually doesn't really uh, change anything. So uh, we're going to go back over to Libran. I believe that is it confirming that it has figured it out. Um, come over to Lightburn and we need to go to devices and set up Lightburn bridge. So we're going to click next and we can basically ignore all of this click connect and it's going to start searching our network for this lightburn bridge um, and we'll also notice that it has moved us back over to our original internet so uh, you don't have to like swap over to it or anything like that and there it is so this is uh, ours right here 
click onto that guy. You don't have to wait for it to look for everything. Add device. You can name it anything you want. Uh, so we're going to just say uh, Ruida. Okay, and basically you're just setting your laser up again. Uh, so this uh, number should be pulled from the Ruida controller itself, but maybe it's not. Double check it. Uh, next. Uh, make sure that uh, the position is correct because it does not remember that. I don't know why it's going so slow at the moment. And there we go. That's it. Finish. And you'll see we have Ruida right here. And we can set that to our default. Okie doke. And you can see it right down here it says found uh, KT332N, so it should be good to go. Um, if for any reason it's having issues, right click on devices and it will look for it again. All right, and that is it. Uh, from this point on, uh, if you do anything, you can just send that right over to uh, the, the laser cutter and it just works. There you go. All done.